I put together my whole Willys engine collection right here because I need two motors. Now I'm working on a CJ2A, which takes the L-head flathead style motor, and I'm also working on an FC150, which came with the F-head type motor. And I've got two F-head motors and three L-head motors. Um, all these are seized. That one's seized. This one is the one I pulled out of the little red Jeep. Uh, it turns over, but makes massive clunking sounds, and some of the lifters fell into the bottom. So that's junk, but it's the only one that turns over. Uh, now I'm going to ter start tearing into these. Um, first thing, I'm going to start with the F heads, and I'm going to start draining oil on those and see if I can take these two motors that are both junk and put them together into something that runs. Well, let's see what comes out of this motor. Oh yeah, that's not a good sign. Yeah, definitely not a good sign. Yeah, that kind of looks like oil. While we're letting the oil drain down below, let's take a look at these spark plugs look like. See how bad these cylinders are. Uh, first, air hose. Now that doesn't want to go. Let's try the next one. There's so much junk in there. I don't think we have a hex anymore on that one. Yeah, these are rusted in there good. Oh, hey, one turned. Okay, we see here, this electrode has been smashed in and it's rusty. So neither one of those things is a good sign. We'll see what else happens. How much worse can it get? That's how much worse it can get. Huh. Also has the electrode squished down. Uh, this may explain why the motor stopped running. That just spins. This plug is so rusty, we don't have anything to grip on anymore. All right, let's take that head off. convey on camera is the way this smells. The combination of old oil, mouse, and uh, water, there is definitely a unique smell coming off this motor and it is not pleasant. I'm almost hoping this bolt breaks off so I get it out faster because I don't want to stand here that much longer. The bolts are rusted straight through the side of the nut. That's rusty. Yeah. 
Yeah, it rusted on that badly. So much rust, the push rods are stuck. That's all full of rust. Yeah, that's the lifters. Um, you can see them through the hole. Um, yeah, so this motor is junk, but I'll see what I can salvage off it. Well, I got the oil pump to move. See if I can actually get this out. Hopefully the one part that is completely filled with oil will actually be good because I need this one. I am running low on oil pumps. Oh, it's moving, it's moving. It's full of rust. It turns though. That gear might have an issue. But the oil pump does turn. So all is not lost here. That's, you know, minor. So now I'll show you up close and personal how bad this motor is. Yeah, that should be a cylinder wall there. And, uh, see that one there? That should be a cylinder wall too. Here's the oil pan. Yeah, the sludge is that deep. This thing was full of water for a long time. You can see everything just coated in sludge. It's sort of dripping off. If it was a horror film, this would be a good background. Nice swamp scene. This is the engine that made those horrible clanking noises. And had the broken oil pump. So I'm pretty sure there'll be metal bits inside. Huh. Ah, some nice chunkies. Well, it definitely doesn't look good. But I can probably just take off the pan. See what kind of shrapnel there is in that one. There we go. One side. All right, well, let's see what we got. We definitely have metal. We've got a piece of camshaft, a lifter. We have a piece of camshaft. We have a piece of block. That's bad. We have a connecting rod. We have another piece of camshaft. Huh, we have unknown metal junk. So, this motor is trash. Now, well, got bent push rods. All right. You can see in there, there's the camshaft. It's broken off. It's sunk in there. Uh, looks like the block might be cracked there where the push rod goes through. And we have, there's a connecting rod. That's supposed to be pointing at that piston down there, not at the side of the block. Right there is the cam bearing. Now, that's one end of the camshaft. There's another piece of camshaft over there. Uh, that block is just snapped off right there. So basically this motor is complete garbage. That's unfortunate. All right, so now I know for a fact this block is junk. So uh, we're just gonna tear this sucker down, take everything I can that I can use and save it and get rid of the block. That actually looks decent. What do we got? No, yeah, the head looks serviceable. So that isn't ruined. All right. Exhaust manifold looks decent. We'll save that. Yeah, water pump was rusted in, but it spins free. So saving that. Distributor. Yep, broke. Faster. It's not like this block is any good. Hopefully this one breaks too. That was much faster. Yep, breaks. Mission system. Save that. I'm planning on saving these pistons. There's two good ones in here. There we go. There we go. Another good one. So two junk F-head blocks. Uh, now my problem is, what am I going to do for a motor? Now this is an L head 134. Let's see what we got. 
Well, there's a lot of water. Usually these have a 7 16 thread, which is normally a 5 8 or 11 16 hex. We got a lot of three quarters. I'm also noticing a lot of them are mismatched. So this motor has definitely been apart before. That's a three quarter. That one's a flange bolt that definitely is not factory. Yeah, got all the bolts out. It's time to take this thing off and see what the damage is. All right, moment of truth. Here she goes. Maybe someday. There we are. Ooh, nice. That cylinder with about an inch and a half of water in it. This one, yeah, probably an inch. This appears to be mud. Yep, so the motor's full of mud. Yep, there's more mud. This looks all promising. Now I started cleaning this up a little bit for big chunks of stuff that are on the outside. This wheel has um, their steel rods and it basically takes off big piles of stuff real fast. But I don't want to get into the cylinders with this because I don't want to score them up. Uh, for that, I go into, these are both nylon types. This little cup brush has little nylon bristles on it and then the big poof ball of, um, of abrasive pad here. Now, this is the one I want to clean the cylinders with, but it doesn't actually fit. So we're going to modify it. Now this looks like a round ball, but if you go inside there, you can see there's actually a screw in there. Got the arbor out, and this whole ball is just made of flap wheels. Basically they're all the same, they're stacked together, and just bolted down onto the arbor. So we're going to take a few of these out, so we have uh, less to deal with. Basically I'm going to put this nut onto the screw, that way they're all hauled together. Then we'll thread this arbor on. Okay. But now we have a smaller version. There we go. Whenever you have this much loose stuff in an engine, I always use a vacuum cleaner to get it out. Never compressed air. That nozzle is way too big to get into crevices. They do make a crevice tool for couches and things. Even that's a little big. What I did is I found a piece of tubing. It's a pretty small diameter. And on the end I went with a piece of tube, with another piece of tube, with another piece of tube, making an adapter that I'm going to then cram into this and make myself a tiny, tiny little nozzle. And if you need to, you can get into bolt holes too, clear out the debris from those threads. Now I'm going to go to that little nylon cup brush. This is a brake cylinder hone, similar to the kind of hone used on a regular cylinder here. But because we only have a little bit to work with, these smaller, um, smaller stones are going to work better. It's time to try to rotate this. The most gentle way to do it was with the flywheel. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to take a screwdriver put it in the teeth, pry on it, and see if that'll turn. All right, absolutely nothing there. But basically we're gonna use a wood block to hammer down on the pistons to try to break those free of the cylinder walls. Now, if you listen to the sound, that one sounded a little more hollow. I think that cylinder's free. Same with that one. I think we got the back two to work with. I think it's this one. Notice the higher pitch sound when you hammer it. All right, so far we're not going anywhere. I don't want to just hammer on this. There's one more trick you can do. Just heat up that piston, try to get it to expand a little bit. Then when it cools down, it might get a gap in the wall there and the oil will get into it. You see how there's bubbles coming out between the piston and cylinder wall? That is driving dirt out from between those two surfaces. So that's a good sign. All right, got it hot. Gonna go penetrating oil while it's still hot. 
Now I'm gonna let that cool completely before I try it again. That way the aluminum will contract as much as possible. Now you don't wanna rush this process because that's when things break. Um, I had to make sure I let it cool down all the way before I play with it. Sometimes you have to uh, find something to distract yourself so you don't sit there and poke at it. Uh, in this case, I made a meatloaf. So just in about a time a meatloaf got in the oven, uh, that piston is nice and cool. So I'm gonna try this again. Okay, not going quite easy yet. We're gonna give it a little tap and see what happens. All right, it's not free, so I'm gonna repeat the process. Let it cool down again. This time I ate the meatloaf. It was really tasty, by the way. And uh, now we're taking another crack at it, see if we can pop this thing loose. I always point this end towards your head, just in case it slips. Oh wait, don't do that. Do the opposite of that. I think I may have used up that piece of wood. Now this cylinder four, I filled up with some uh, PB blaster. I'm gonna let it sit overnight and see if that uh, puddle oozes through the gap. So uh, if that puddle's gone in the morning, I know I'm getting oil in the, in the rings. Now it's the next day and the penetrating oil is still completely filling that cylinder. Uh, so that means there is no gap between the piston and the cylinder wall there's nothing for the fluid to go through. That's, that's seized up tight. Which gave me an idea. So this will be my piston, which is a piston, so it'll work. Turned it down a little bit because this is a 60 over piston. Those are 40 over. So I turned it to fit, cut the end off, and I am going to use this is a hydraulic piston to shove the fluid in. So basically I'm gonna drop this in, have a, a gap of fluid in the middle, hammer on this one, the fluid will keep me from hitting that piston directly, and shove all that penetrating oil into that cylinder. In, in theory, that's what should happen. We'll see what actually does. I wrap tape around the piston to try to get a little tighter fit. Hopefully I don't get sprayed with oil when I do this. Maybe just a little bit harder. I'm going to give up for a little while on that other motor. Just let it soak. Because the longer it soaks, the more likely it is it'll free up. And I'm going to turn my attention to one of the other ones that was laying there next to it. Uh, this one... I was originally not going to use because it's missing a bunch of valves uh, because this was actually an air compressor which I'll uh, show you more about that in a little while. It has been sitting outside so inside is looking pretty rusty. Uh, it's missing a lot of parts off the front um, but it has all the head studs so I don't have to extract broken ones yet. Now it doesn't have a flywheel so I got to get one but I want to show you a little bit about what I'm doing there. I have two different flywheel options. One is the L-head flywheel, which is what was on there originally, probably. And uh, then there's the F-head flywheel. Let me show you the difference. This one right here has the L-head flywheel. You can see where the, most of the mass is, the ring gear is right there. This right here is an F-head flywheel. And the ring gear sticks out quite a bit further. Also, the starter's in a different location, and it uses a different starter. Now, um, both of those options will actually bolt to this motor and work, but what I'm going to do is use the F-head flywheel for uh, two reasons. One, I have a spare right there. The second one is the bell housing. They're different between the two. I don't have any more L-head bell housings at all that I can steal, so I have to use an F-head bell housing because I have spares of those. The third reason out of the two is that uh, starters are a lot cheaper and easier to get for the F-head than the L-head. The F-head starter it can be replaced with a Toyota unit, which is easy to get and works better. One thing to notice on these when you're changing flywheels, there are two bolts that are actually on a taper. Those are not a straight bolt. 
and then four that are straight bolts. On the flywheel, there are two tapered holes and four straight ones. Make sure you get the right ones lined up. The other critical thing is to make sure you install this backing plate before you put on that flywheel. Luckily, I only started two bolts. So I can take it off easy. But now make sure we still get those tapered bolts in the right spot. Now, one advantage I have with this motor is it's partially disassembled. So the cam gears are missing. I'm not going to be turning the camshaft at all. So if there's any uh, restriction there or, or uh, resistance, I'm not going to see it turning the crankshaft. So this is just turning the crank and the pistons. We'll worry about the uh, camshaft and the oil pump drive and all that stuff later. But let's see if this turns. All right, let's see what we got. It turns. It's moving. These two cylinders that went down, I can clean those up and uh, get some of that, well, gunk out of there. I was really hopeful about this motor because uh, not only did it start to move, the pistons are stamped standard, which means this hasn't even bored, been bored yet. But then I found a problem. Let me show you the problem. See that? Now that is a gouge. And that is a wrist pin coming out and going into the side of the piston wall. You probably noticed that this motor is missing the valves in the middle cylinders. And a lot of people would think that it was because it had been started to be disassembled. That's not why. The reason it's missing those valves is this was an air compressor. Now this is a cylinder head. This, these giant gaping holes are not normal in a deep cylinder head. This was made by uh, General Supply Company, uh, let's see, it is General Supply Company, Kansas City, Missouri. And this motor was made to be an air compressor. What they did is they actually had two cylinders, ran fuel, and actually ran this thing to power it. The other two cylinders had a one-way valve that let air in. So these two cylinders sucked air in and then it blew the air out this side out this is a gasoline powered air compressor built out of a willys motor with two spark plugs running two cylinders for power and two cylinders for air and i think that's a neat use of these l heads and you can see there's no valves reliefs at all cut in here those these are specifically cast just for this air compressor application and these connect. So both these cylinders are compressing at the same time. So it acted like, uh, kind of like a two stroke. Every time it pushed up, it compressed air for the compressor. And then the other two cylinders work just like a normal Willys running regular four stroke. So uh, this is a neat little piece. Now this is not mine. I actually got this motor from a buddy of mine who just wanted the cylinder head and gave me the motor because it was junk. But uh, I borrowed this just to show you because I think that's neat. Now this block is a really deep gouge and I'm not sure whether boring is going to clean it up. So I want to measure it. Obviously I'm not going to get a measuring tool in there. Show you a nifty trick. Steal a lump of your kid's Play-Doh. Um, try to pick a color that they won't miss. That way there's no drama. And then take the Play-Doh and make an impression of the lump in the wall. Just press it in there good. Peel it off, and you can see that grease stain spot. Then you have something to measure. Now obviously you're not gonna get a precise measurement, but you get you in the ballpark. So in this case, I'm looking at about 14 thou, which is good, because these are standard size pistons. 14 thou on the radius means 28 in diameter. I think this will clean up with a 30 thou overboard, and definitely should with a 40. Out of my original five Willys motors, I'm down to my last one to find something good. And I didn't want to use this one. I'll show you why. The most glaring thing I saw was this block has been welded up. So there are um, big cracks in this block already that have been fixed. So that's not a good sign to start with. 
Then there's bolts sheared off in the head here. So I'm gonna have to extract those. Some came out, some look like they're gonna break when I take them out. Some of the top threads are broken off. Um, this has been open to the weather a long time. That stuff is rusty in there. Um, all the ports are rusty. Obviously it's seized, because you know I wouldn't have one that wasn't, I don't think. Also, whoever ran this last, ran the oil line, they're supposed to go through a filter here, but they ran the oil line straight into the timing cover. So they eliminated the oil filter and ran this motor straight with absolutely no filtration. So um, I don't feel good about this motor. This is definitely my last resort, but it's here, so might as well try to get it running. Plug feels rusty. That's not a good sign. I have a feeling this thing's empty. Yep, bone dry. Yeah, this one's gonna need a good cleanup. Just a little bit of stuff in there. Another interesting thing about this block is this tag. I don't know if you can read it through the camera, but it says uh, basically without a good air filter, this motor is not guaranteed. That means to me that this was not actually installed in the vehicle. This motor was sent out separately for use in like um, an industrial application, like a water pump or a welder or something, where when they made the motor, they didn't know where it was going. a plastic abrasive pad with a lot of with a lot of void so this can get rid of some big chunks We're gonna try the pry bar and give it a little tweak a rooney. Ooh, it moved a little bit. Let's go the other way. Oh yeah, we got movement. We have movement. Spray a little oil. Got two cylinders up all the way, which means the other two are down all the way. And those are the two with the worst cylinders. So I'm gonna work on cleaning those up then spin it over 180, then work on cleaning these up. I'm gonna dip you into the cylinder so you can look for me. Anything good down there or just rust? And now I'll watch that back and I can see in there too. Oops, that was bad. Well, I need to clean all the way to the bottom of that cylinder, and there's absolutely no way this hand is fitting in that hole with a rag. So, what I'm going to do is shove a bit of rag down there, and then use a wooden stick, and sort of butter churn style, get the walls clean. There's the oil pump out of that um, rusty F head. Let's uh, see if we can reuse this. I'm employing my Senior Pino's Green Chili oil pump test rig. Got the oil pump in there. Oh yeah. Lots of oil. That pump should be fine. Now, I don't trust that oil pump yet, so I want to get oil filling this galley ahead of time before I spin the motor at any speed. So what I've done, as I attach the T, I've got a gauge, then I've got a line coming down, and this right here is my old um, fuel pump, my in-tank pump from that Grand Cherokee I just was racing the other weekend. And I don't need that anymore. Um, so 20, uh, so 520 oils, so that's real light. We employ the oil bucket again. So we're just gonna dump this pump straight in there. And then I've got a battery. I'm gonna hook the jumper cables to and uh, hopefully what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pump that oil through the tube into the gauge and um, fill that whole motor with oil, the cranks, the crank, the rods, the mains, everything, even the cam bearings full of oil before I do a lot of spinning it over. So let's see how that works. 
Yep, pump is running. Let's see. Still, oh, the tank gauge is moving up. We're above zero. The oil level is going down, so we are pumping oil into that motor. Well, let me add some more before it runs out. All right, another thing to watch for is make sure the valves move now that we have motion here. Now, I'm noticing both these valves are open. Uh, that means these are sticking too. So we'll add a little oil. I'll just give them a little encouragement to go home. There we go. Oh, there we go. It's already closing. Oh, I see I have a couple here stuck. This one doesn't pull out. This valve is giving me a lot of trouble. It was stuck all the way up. Now I gotta go down a little bit. I can't spin the motor anymore because the cam won't lift it back up. So uh, this may actually destroy the valve, but I have others, so I can replace it. I don't want to replace that cam though. Okay. This valve, I just bent it. It is stuck good, so I'm gonna have to replace it no matter what. So let's get in there and deal with that. I'm gonna do the DIY spring compressor. There we go. Oh yeah, there we got one. It's almost there. There. Now this is the motor that was missing those middle valves. The cam is not connected by any gears. It has two intake valves. I'm gonna spin the cam and see if either one of those pop up. Whichever one moves, I'm taking. Oh, that one moved. Yep, that'll work fine, perfect. Well, here's a look inside the rabbit hole. That's fine, I don't see a real problem there. And here's the new valve. Now, I was even gonna go so far as to lap it, but um, for some reason my lapping tool is broken. So, um, yeah, we're not gonna do that. that. That's perfect as is. As you can see, I've done significant upgrades to my valve spring compressor. So this should be perfect now. There we go. Okay, valve spring compressor 3.0. I've added a strap that I can actually put my foot in. And so I can use my foot and have both hands free so I can easily work on anything in here. I don't know why they don't have foot operated valve spring compressors normally. Almost. And there we go. This is easy as that, 20 minutes later. Oh yeah. Now I'll just set the last and we should be good as new. Got the distributor, I pulled off the uh, blue F head. I put that on there. Ooh, points open and closed, so that's something. I'm not getting anywhere with this. Um, basically I've been drilling it bigger and bigger. I can see the threads. I tried chasing with a tap and it's just destroying the cast iron. So we're gonna put a thread insert in there. Now the first thing I need to do is drill a hole here. Now you've gotta make sure that hole goes in straight. So what I do is I eyeball it along the other studs this way and this stud this way to make sure I, uh, it looks like I'm in line with those and that should keep it straight. So we get a straight eye on it here. And then this way. Got our helicoil tap. Uh, got a little cutting oil on there. And again, you gotta make sure this is just uh, square with everything because you don't want this going in at an angle. So, get an eyeball this way, get an eyeball this way, get your alignment and start cutting. And the first few threads, you can fix that alignment if you don't get it right. But once you get a little deeper, it's gonna follow whatever you did. So, gotta make sure you catch it early. Now we got good threads to work with. Remember when I said this vacuum adapter can get in deep holes if needed? It's needed. Look at all that stuff we're getting out of there. Yep, keep going to the 
vacuum comes up clean. I'm gonna do a dab of Loctite on this helicoil. Oops, too much. And uh, that way, it should stay there for a little while. We're gonna see what we can do about that broken stud. Now I did already heat this and oil it, so now we're gonna try just removing it, see what happens. Now this one is made back in the day where they didn't just put the country origin, they put the uh, town and the state. There we go. It's moving. There we go. Got it. Oh, there's a lot of rust on the end of that. Go figure. Now I want to chase the threads and all those studs that are left. And uh, I have a tap that's the right thread, but it uses this kind of tap handle. And there's absolutely no way I'm going to be spinning this around there. So I have to drive this some other way. If you guys happen to have hex dies, that's easy. You just put them on a socket. But this one's round, so it gets a little tricky. But it does have a groove. So what you do is you find a socket that fits pretty tightly. 12 point is preferable. Slide that in there. And you see you got a spot where the two, uh, when that groove lines up with one of the, uh, the notches for the nut. Uh, then you take something, this is a case I got a screw that fits pretty tight, piece of wire, dowel pin, whatever, uh, roll pin. Screws work nicely because you can just sort of turn them in and they um, are easy to remove because you just unscrew them. But it doesn't have to fit perfect, this one's a little loose, but it should be enough to drive it. So now, we start it up. There. Now we have nice clean threads. We repeat on all of those. I'm just gonna bolt that motor to this transmission and transfer case to give it something to hold the starter and spin it over. This is the one out of that CJ5 that I drug out of the woods. Um, I do have to do a little evicting first though. Someone used to live here. I threw a clutch on here. Um, it's an Auburn one. I chose it because it was the first one lying on the floor as I walked towards the pile of parts. So uh, it's installed. Now let's go ahead and get this and that hooked up so we can put a starter in here and spin it at speed. There we go. There we go. One bolt in. I've got the motor hooked to a bell housing, so now I can mount a starter and uh, spin it over at speed and see if we actually make oil pressure on its own, because that's going to be key for going any further. I've never tried one of these on an F head. There. It's perfect. Ready to hit the button. Well, that sounds good. Also sounds like something clunky in the lower end. Um, let's ignore that for now and spin it a little more. There's definitely something loose in there. I probably should fix that. Ideally, when you have the motor on the engine stand, is the time to open up the oil pan and look inside. We didn't do that. It's the next day. I slept on it, and I don't want to go backwards by pulling this transmission off and putting this back on a stand. I'm just going to keep going forward, believing that this is going to work. So I'm going to find something to put this in so that I can drop the pan uh, while it's held in place. Oh look, I happen to have a convenient FC-150 frame sitting right here outside my shop. Let's put it in that. Now I have this motor stabilized, we can take that pan off, because clearly installing a motor before fixing it is a good idea. Now it's time to pull the pan. All right. Oh. Okay. Then. Well. This right here is the oil pickup that is supposed to, you know, 
get oil to go in the motor. That's supposed to be attached. And then cast something. This actually looks like it's what held that. So, uh, well that's not good. It's a good thing we have all these motors lying around. I'm just gonna steal another one. But somebody just has a good one. Oh, now that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be attached. This is the piece that was the broken casting. Lost this, and that went into the crank. So, uh, this one even looks pretty clean. Nice. Maybe I'll steal that oil pan too. Alright, so you can see down here, oil pickup is now installed and actually attached to the motor as opposed to floating loose around the oil pan. Took that other oil pan, cleaned it up. Coincidentally, I ran out of brake clean just at the time I decided this was good enough. So uh, we're just gonna install it. Go in the diesel oil, because this is more like what these motors were supposed to have. A lot better than the current oils we have these days. All right, let's crank her over. Now that's a starter. I like that. I want to make sure you do use compressed air on the intake valves. Because uh, all that crud in the port is going to get sucked into the motor if you let it run. The easiest time to tell when you're at top dead center is with the head off. So I've got it turned to top dead center, and then I bumped it a few degrees before top dead center, and now I'm going to set my ignition timing. We've got our points closed, we're going to rotate the distributor, until it opens, right there, double check, right there. And that is where the plug's gonna fire. So we got our ignition already set. And of course, there's a stud broken off in the exhaust manifold I found. So uh, we're gonna drill this out now before it's mounted to the engine because this will make my life easier. I'm all about making my life easier. Now this is something I'm going to thank myself for later, assuming I can get this motor running. And even if I can't, I'll reuse this manifold on something else, and someday I'm going to bolt an exhaust to it. Now this gasket doesn't look like it tore at all when the old manifold came off, so uh, I think I'm just going to reuse it. Looks fine. Now I was all happy putting that on there and starting to look like I'm going to assemble it, and then I saw there's no bolt sticking out there. It looks like there's a bolt, but it's supposed to be longer. It's snapped off. So while I thought I was ready to bolt the manifold on, I am now taking it off and going to be pulling this stud out somehow. Yeah, it snapped off immediately. Um, luckily, as you can see, it's a coarse thread. And that just happens to be the same size I just had out for the um, exhaust manifold. So I already have the drill and tap ready to go. I'm just gonna drill that thing out, re-tap the hole, and we'll be good there. Eventually, I'm going to need to put a stud in there and seal those threads so coolant will come out. But I don't even know if this motor is going to run yet. But I can do that later, even without removing the manifold again. I can just pop the bolt out and put a stud in. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. And it will probably leak there, but that's probably the least of my concerns. I got the head to that motor here. And uh, it's got some old gaskets, some carbon, some rust. But it's really not too bad. It's in pretty good shape. It does have one crack in it, but we're going to worry about that later. Because at this point, I don't even have a radiator. So one crack won't matter. All right, this head cleaned up pretty well. Uh, one thing, I ended up closing up the gaps in all the plugs. Um, and I don't see any reason to remove them. I'm just going to go ahead and use them as is. But I do need a gap. So we'll just re-gap those plugs. There, plugs are gapped, head is clean. Uh, this is pretty much ready to install. I bought the absolute cheapest head gasket the Rock Auto sells. I'm gonna use that. And uh, let's pop this together. Now I've got a number of head studs that came out when I disassembled motors, came out of the block because the top end was rusted. Now to reassemble it, I wanna put this in the block first and then attach the nut. 
So uh, we gotta separate these. Standard operating procedure for these, heat, oil, impact. You wanna heat the nut first and fast because um, hopefully the nut will expand more than the uh, stud does, which will give you a little bit of a gap. There we go. Got a full set of studs in here. Got the gasket on. And there we go. It's time to torque these nuts down. Um, there's patterns for this, but they basically all work the same. You start at the center and sort of spiral your way outwards, and it kind of works like a wave. The head presses down in the middle and then pushes along the way. I'm gonna go to 20 foot-pounds first, and then up from there. There, head's all torqued down. So uh, now I just gotta do accessory stuff. I need a carburetor, so I went and bought the cheapest one I found on eBay. Also happens to be the shiniest one, which concerns me, because it's too shiny. Um, this is all steel and should be rusty. It's all nice and clean, which makes me think someone took the bead blaster to it and just cleaned up the carb and made it look shiny, even though they didn't actually do anything good inside. I expect there's internal problems with this, so there's just a few screws to take off the cover and look inside. Uh, so I'm just gonna bolt it directly on and see what happens. Now it's on to ignition. Found a coil, but I need to demud it a little bit. Cause um, yeah, I don't think I have a good connection there yet. But that's all right. I'm sure it's fine. I didn't have enough fittings to actually hook this to a gas tank. So I just put a 90 facing up, uh, gear oil, bottle nozzle, and we're just going to fill the float bowl up. Now, uh, I don't want this to run very long anyway without coolant, so this will be plenty to see if it starts. We've got accelerator pump action. This carb isn't all bad. Huh, we might be getting ready to fire this thing. I added some block off plates to open vacuum ports. Going to take out this little funnel. And uh, I think we're ready to give it a whirl. You want to play the guess if it starts game, this is the time to put in a comment. Alright, let me see if the ignition works. Put it in one of these little inline spark testers. So we'll all see what happens. Yeah, we got spark. Ooh, I heard something. We're getting somewhere. We take off the choke. It's alive and smoky. So far, I feel good about this. Went into my park shed and stole this off a fuel pump and it appears to be full of something. So we're just gonna clear this out and uh, hook up some fuel there. Now an old piece of brake line. Now an old primer bulb from a boat tank. That way I can just hand pump the carburetor up and it won't continuously flow. Got more fuel in the car. So let's try this again. <laughs> fuel but uh she runs getting this motor running was supposed to be the end of my video and it does run but I don't feel satisfied because with that crack in the head I can't actually use it in anything um, I do have other heads I could have put on one that wasn't cracked but that's the one that came off this motor and uh, I want to see what I can do to fix it so 
I'm going to fix this in the cheapest and quickest way possible, JB Weld. Uh, this may not be a permanent solution, and I can't always grind off the JB Weld and weld it up or do some proper repair, but um, I'm going to try it and see what happens. I'm going to try to actually push some in that crack. There, we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll work. My block off plate on the fuel pump hole wasn't quite working well. I've got oil on the side of the shop wall in order to show that. So uh, I'm going to need to do something with that. Now I have old fuel pumps. Uh, one thing I've learned is even if an old fuel pump works, it might not be a good idea because the fuel pump connects directly to the crankcase. If you have a leak in that, you can have a working pump that pumps fuel into your crankcase while the motor runs. And you don't even know about it till afterwards. Had that happened to me before. So um, I wanted to at least rebuild the pump. I was looking at rebuild kits, found the one that was pretty cheap for a complete unit. And it is from US Motor Works. So I'm thinking, oh hey, US made pump? Oh no, made in China, but with US technology. So. I don't know, we'll see. But it wasn't much more than the cost of a rebuild kit, so uh, I'm gonna try it and see what happens. If nothing else, it should keep the oil from coming out of the motor. Looks like a fuel pump. Ooh, there's gaskets. Nice. One other thing I've noticed is this motor mount can be an issue. You go to put your fuel pump in, your fittings are right up against it. Now, I wanna use a 90 degree fitting if I go to put that in after the fuel pump's in, I won't be able to tighten it down. So make sure you add your fittings first before you bolt the pump in. Got my fuel pump in, tucked up to a boat tank like usual. Uh, and now I want to hook up some kind of cooling system. So I've got my two connectors here, both point to the same side of the motor. So what I want is a radiator with both the inlet and outlet on the same side. So I went through digging through my pile of spare radiators, because of course I hoard those too. I found this one, and then I'm on the same side. Um, I think it was from a Volkswagen water-cooled something front-wheel drive. But this will probably be enough to cool this motor. Has both the inlet and outlet on the same side, but they're the wrong side. So if I tried to set it up like this, they're facing forward. That's a bit of a problem. So I'm just going to put the radiator over here for now. Um, that should be fine. I went through my stack of old radiator hoses, found a pile. I'm gonna slice and dice these until they make things connect. Got my radiator here. I've got radiator hoses made up, and yes, it is a tube slid in another tube. That's not leaking. Um, that bolt I was expecting to leak is leaking, so that was expected. Now on the other side, it looks like the JB Weld is holding up fine. Uh, I don't see any leaks at all there. I do have a, a freeze plug here that's leaking. So we got some drips coming down the side. I threw in a temperature gauge. It looks like the temperature gauge is leaking, but um, that's just a little bit. I'm gonna attempt to fire this up and warm up the motor, check for any knocking, see if the smoke clears up, and um, then I'll know whether it's worth fixing all the rest of those leaks. So uh, let's give it a whirl. I don't have an alternator, so I just slapped a belt on here. I'm assuming that'll be enough to keep it spinning without a fan. Doesn't look like this is turning. That could be an issue. Hmm. Let's put it on the next groove over. Try to tighten that belt up a little bit. It'll be misaligned, but might do. I'll let you see the motor spin that the rest of the way. There we go. Now the water pump works. Oh, it's getting fuel. Almost. Come on, you can do it.
Now I feel like I can conclude this video because I got a running motor. It's got a few little leaks. Those aren't too major. I should be able to fix those easy enough. Um, it doesn't run great, but it runs fairly decent. Has some blow by, but it's not leaving a trail of smoke as it goes. I've had a lot of vehicles that have motors in this condition and drove them for years. So uh, this is something I can deal with. Now I also found two other motors that have potential. Uh, the one that has the one piston still stuck, I think I can get that going. I'll just give a little more time and probably take the crank out and take each piston individually and see if I can get it going that way. The one with the gouge on the cylinder, that could be bored to a decent oversized piston and be completely rebuilt and be perfectly fine. So out of my five motors, I was disappointed I don't have an F head at all, but it looks like I'll have three L heads that'll work eventually. So uh, now I can move on to get him to do stuff. So in the meantime, keep having fun. I'll keep playing with toys. What do I would take to get this frame driving? That would be fun.